So a very, very good morning to each and every one of you. I just want to firstly acknowledge uh, all our clients. Thank you so much for coming on time. We did say we'll start at 8.30 and I'm happy that we are starting on time. So a very good morning to all of you. A number of you have traveled from very far. I've just met somebody, a client, a farmer who's coming all the way from Kabwe. So we just acknowledge each and every one of you. And we thank you uh, for believing in APSA and indeed for banking with us. And for those of you who don't bank with us, we still acknowledge you and we hope you will uh, <clears throat> change your mind by the time we are done. Uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, our, our panelists today. Uh, uh, we have Mr. Rido Marcos, uh, who's our group economist coming all the way from uh, from South Africa. You're welcome, Rido. Uh, he's, he's very experienced. He has all the answers usually. So we are in the right place. I'm excited. You know, I'm excited to have Mr. Andrew Chibwe as well. He is also our very local economist. And, you know, uh, if, you, if you are very nice to him, he'll tell you the difference between an apple and an orange. So we are really happy to have him today. And uh, he will simplify it like that for us. You know, my reader will try and complicate it, but Andrew will bring it down and say, this is what he meant. You know, so we're happy to have him as well. And uh, Mr. Mwewa Chivesakunda is now a household name. You know, he's become one of us. And uh, we are just so happy to have you here, sir. Thank you for what you do with Financial Insights. We are really, really grateful. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, it's nice to see you just doing so well in this uh, uh, economic space. Uh, we also want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Stanley Tamele. Stanley had been behind uh, putting all this together. Uh, he's our senior executive who's here to just, uh, you know, bring it all together for us on behalf of the bank. So we have an amazing panelist today, and uh, we also have uh, a number of leaders, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the building, a number of our CMCs. Maybe let me kindly ask them to stand wherever they are, the CMCs, just so you see the senior leaders in the bank, our CMC. Yeah, so thank you so much. Why don't you give them a clap and just uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I always say these guys, they, they are, I'm, I'm as, you know, they're, they're so good. They do everything so well. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really proud of them. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge uh, members of the press. Uh, this is also your briefing. We are so happy to have you. And uh, uh, you know, we, we, just, we just acknowledge you. We have repositioned our brand and whenever I have an opportunity uh, to have all the clients together, uh, I talk about this just so that uh, we, we, we carry you along. Uh, so as a bank, we have repositioned our brand uh, and, um, you know, our tagline is your story matters and uh, we truly believe that uh, uh, it's important for us to be human-centric. You know, as we are dealing with our clients, we have to put ourselves in our clients' shoes and understand where you are coming from and what your story is. So we believe in being human-centric, in being empathetic, as we are dealing with your clients, in being empathetic, and really in providing you seamless customer experience. Now, that is a big promise that we have made. When we say seamless customer experience, we believe it's a big promise because it's always not easy to give that seamless customer experience, especially when you're in the digital world. But we have come up and say, that's who we're going to be as APSA. We'll give you the seamless customer experience. But at the same time, we want to understand your story because your story matters. And as we understand, get to learn and understand your story, we'll be able to identify the opportunities of how we can help you, how we can work together with you and say, uh, this is where you are. Uh, and, uh, you know, as Mato always says, we may not have the answers for you as yet, but we will work with you on your journey to yes. So as we are getting to that journey where we're going to say, yes, this is where you're going to be, we will work with you uh, to your journey to, to yes. 
our colors have also changed while as before we had so many different colors we are now predominantly red so we are now predominantly red we have the last you know about 20 percent of the other colors that you still see around that just helps us uh, uh you know in cementing our red but we are predominantly a red bank we are bold and we're here to say your story matters and we're here to listen uh, to what you have to say uh this morning ladies and gentlemen uh, our dear clients we are here to just uh really look at the uh, economic uh, the performance of our economy how is our economy doing which sectors are doing well which sectors are struggling where are the opportunities and how do we work uh, together uh, as we are working on the recovery of our economy many of the african stories have got so many issues and it's so true every time we talk to international investors and i i just completed the u.s roadshow last week um, probably talking to around 30 U.S. accounts. Um, the message is quite clear and simple. There's, there's no story with conviction in the African space. Um, having said that, there are a couple of good stories. So just bear with me for two or three minutes before I move on to the Zambia story. Because the context I think is important. You've got markets such as Senegal and Ivory Coast in, the, in, in West Africa that is doing well and probably going to grow between 6 to, to 8 or 9 percent this year you know, over the next two years driven by oil, largely, oil and gas fines in those markets. Um, Nigeria is struggling. If you think you've got issues, Nigeria is even worse. Inflation there is at 31.7%, food inflation is at 38%, and trust me, people are struggling a lot. Growth is very weak. It's probably around 3%, or 2.9% last year. Ghana just came out of a default, just like Zambia um, is in default, and it's also struggling with debt restructuring issues. Um, their currency is, is also moving much higher now. There's a lot of confidence and concern about the debt restructuring process and um, of, obviously the elections coming for, for, for Ghana. East Africa is actually doing fairly well. Um, on average, growth in East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, between 5 to 5.5%. Five However, we know that East Africa is very much an agriculture story, so agriculture is doing well at the moment, but they also just came out of the worst drought in 40 years. I've been covering these markets for, for 14 years, and what I've noticed is that the, the cycles of droughts are becoming shorter and shorter. So previously it used to be like five years before we hit the next drought, now it's come down to like nearly every three years and we've got a drought in East Africa. And then Southern Africa, a much more varied story. You've got Angola struggling a lot, no growth in, in oil production, um, if they've got huge debt issues, Namibia are very exposed to mining, Botswana exposed to diamond mining, and because of the weaker global backdrop, demand for diamonds, especially in key markets such as the US and China, has actually um, fallen. Mozambique is struggling with insurgency, they too have an election, and they can expect a bit of volatility. So that leaves us with Zambia. Uh, and we don't need to talk about South Africa. We know South Africa's growth last year was probably half a percentage point, just about half a percentage point, and probably going to be just about 1.1% about this year. So doubling in, in growth, but still very, very low, and probably below the population growth rate. Um, and that uh, brings me to, to the Zambia story. You will see my headline, um, if you don't mind putting up the, the first page, just a, the cover page. The, the, the theme that I have for, for Zambia is there's going to be near to medium term pressures, but I'm still constructive um, about the long term story for Zambia. And I'm not just saying that because I'm in Zambia. Trust me, I've written articles over the past couple of uh, quarters that, that you can have a look at. I do think that the global environment obviously has a big role to play in, in, in Zambia's story. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, um, the latest article I, I, I wrote about Ghana, uh, sorry, Zambia, the heading was caught in a crossfire. You're really caught in a crossfire between um, the West and the East at this point in time, I think, and especially that shows in, in the debt destruction. Um, then also you're at the mercy of copper prices that's largely determined internationally. You've got a global backdrop for, uh, that determines the demand for that copper. 
um, you've got a very volatile weather conditions that you've got no control of, it's not easy. I think your government under President uh, Ichilima has done very well compared to many of the other markets that I cover, and I cover around 19 markets across the continent. The government has stuck largely to, to reforms as suggested by the IMF, but as I told you just now, there's a whole lot of things that's not in control um, by government that they just cannot control. They cannot control weather conditions. Um, so it's not going to be easy, um, uh, uh, trust me, but my, if, if, if you want to take anything from this conversation or this discussion today, think about it this way. Should the debt instruction be completed? Should we see a turn in the drought by the second half of the year? You can start looking forward to a much more constructive outcome or story going forward. The problem is, on debt instruction, and I'll get to, to the details of that in a sec, it's uncertain exactly when that's going to be completed. Um, we think maybe by the end of the second quarter. Um, and on the drought, as you know, um, we just can't predict the, the drought. So it, it can still persist for throughout this year, or it can, um, as we hope that the El Nino impact will start to fade from this year, mid-year, it will start to, not sure what's in there. Um, it, hopefully it will start to, to, to fade and, and we can see uh, improved dam levels even in the second half of the year. Lots of doom and gloom. Hopefully uh, the carefully assembled panel um, will shed some light in terms of uh, some of the nuances. Um, without much further ado, I think uh, your, the panelists have already been familiarized to you. Um, uh, my name is Mwelo Chivesokunda. I'm the founder and CEO of Financial Insight. Um, and thanks to the management team of APSA led by Mzinga, the birthday girl, um, thank you so much for giving us this honor. Um, you should say hello to my team, they're here covering this event and follow us on our uh, social media platforms. Now, um, obviously to put things in perspective, I think what you've heard from the previous speaker uh, basically is a diagnosis of where we are at as, uh, as uh, not only a region, as a country. And um, you can see from uh, you know, the delegates that are here that you know, obviously everyone is very, very curious. And uh, thanks to the APSA team for you know, bringing together you know, a carefully assembled uh, uh, set of panelists who will shed some light uh, into uh, the, you know, the discourse that we're having this morning. Uh, so without much further ado, Marcus, um, thank you so much for a very, very elaborate uh, uh, presentation. I know you left the, the good news towards the, the end, leaving us with a bit of uh, optimism. Um, Andrew, um, you, know, your, you and your team publish uh, quite a lot about the Zambian space. Um, you have the bankers' report, the, miners, uh, the mining sector report, and the financial sector reports. Uh, from where you're sitting, what do you believe is the, the current posture uh, of the country? And I know Ms. Inga mentioned that you, know, you always explain very simply in the form of football or an airplane. Thanks, uh, well, thanks, Zing and the team at APSA for this invitation. I think the, the picture has been painted is a very difficult one. Um, that's the long and short of it. There's no beating about the bush, there's no sugar coating it. It's a challenging um, state of affairs for the economy. And for me, the way that I think about it is a common man, right? So when you still it all. I mean, we, we, we saw the economy still had some growth, right? Uh, but inflation is high, currency is depreciating. It's, it's almost like a, a perfect storm. Now we have, more recently, the drought situation and what that does for food, energy security. It makes a very difficult situation for citizens, for corporates, both small and large, you name it. So that's the reality of where we are. And um, the starting point is we have to acknowledge that we're faced with a very a fairly difficult set of circumstances. Um, you look at it um, in terms of the sectors that are not performing or not performing as they should, uh, the largest parts of the economy. So that is obviously uh, a challenge. For me, obviously, <laughs> irrespective, you have to try and find some silver linings. And, uh, that's really where I think a lot of us need to be applying our minds that irrespective of what we are seeing, what should we be thinking about? Uh, because it's a season and it uh, will 
us, hopefully sooner rather than later, but it's what we're dealing with right now. So it's a, it's a difficult statement. Hello everybody, welcome to this very special uh, occasion. Uh, we are here at Intercontinental Hotel. It's been uh, Zambia Economic Outlook, a panel discussion that's been organized by uh, APSA Bank. My name is Clarence Chongo and I'm sitting here with Raido Marcus, who is the head of uh, Africa Economics for APSA Bank. Welcome to Financial Insights, uh, Raido. Thank you, Clarence. So, uh, we've had uh, an in-depth and uh, uh, very interesting discussion um, uh, today. How, how did you find that panel discussion and the, the entire event this morning? Well, first of all, I appreciate all the interest from the clients that came and uh, those that tuned in online to listen to us. The panel uh, was fantastic. I think what stood out for me is the, the expertise of each of the individuals um, and the broad sort of areas of coverage, um, highlighting some of the economic risks and opportunities um, and the prospects for, for this economy um, going forward. Um, I think it's important to, to note that um, the kind of issues that we discussed uh, range from some of the near-term challenges around debt restructuring, the impact of the drought specifically, and then of course what government can do to alleviate the pressure uh, on the economy. What came out for me of course is that there's broad agreement that while there might be a very positive longer term outlook for the economy that there's very intense short term to medium term pressures that we need to navigate through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed, um, I think at, at some point there's a forecast where the quacha actually drops down to, to, to 30 per dollar. So obviously uh, some headwinds that the economy is, is, is facing, but uh, there is some positive news there, I, we hope. What do you think? We think that the story could turn quite quickly should there be a conclusion to debt restructuring. Mm -hmm. We know that there's nearly over $5 billion going into the copper mines, uh, copper mines um, to improve capacity. So there's certainly all the right fundamentals in place to, um, to ensure stronger growth once these short-term challenges, uh, specifically created by the drought, mm -hmm. um, have, have, have sort of faded. Yeah. Um, but Again, it's not going to be easy getting there. There's a lot of work that needs to come from all stakeholders involved. Um, hopefully we can get the debt restructuring process concluded as soon as possible. Hopefully the rains will return. Um, but beyond that, the outlook is certainly fairly uh, encouraging for, for, for Zambia, especially uh, given the reforms that uh, President Dijalima and his administration uh, uh, have embarked on and also the help from multilaterals. Thank you. And uh, clearly, ABSA will be here to support the economy along the way. ABSA will always be here. Um, we've been in Zambia for, for many, many uh, decades. Um, and we're excited to continue to, to support the economy through this period. Um, and on the research side, we do everything that we can to support our clients and help our clients as well. And ABSA, I suppose, in general. Um, we want to hold hands with clients through this period. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can, we can walk the road together. Well, thank you very much, uh, Raido Marcus, for being here with us on the Financial Insight Show. Thank you, Clarence. Great joining you. Indeed. And there you are, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clarence. This is Financial Insight. Get to know. And I'm sitting here with uh, Stanley Tamele, who is uh, the director for Global Markets at APSA. Welcome to the Financial Insight Show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So, um, a very uh, lovely event that you've put together here. I think we've had uh, very key insights come out from the analysis of our economy and uh, from the, the panel discussion itself. So, how have you found this morning the panel discussion and the event itself? So, the event's been great. And really, it's one of those that, uh, as a bank, we, we choose to do periodically. So we'll typically have one of these in either half of the year. And the idea is for us to be able to give more to our clients than just the products that we offer. Mm -hmm. I think in times like this, when you know, there's turbulence within the economy, uh, you know, there's headwinds that we're certainly facing, yeah it's always opportune to be able to sit down with our clients and give them some insights into what we see. Mm -hmm. we've, access, we've got access to a lot more information via our systems and platforms, mm -hmm. and then also via the network that we have as APSA across Africa. 
and being able to just sit down with clients, share thoughts, share ideas to them, mm -hmm. that goes a long, long way and it helps them in the decision making mm -hmm. around their businesses. So we feel we are even adding more value there and that's Absolutely. why we choose to do that. So today has been absolutely great. Mm -hmm. It's been very good to be here. So what are your key highlights from either from the discussion uh, itself or generally from your perceptions of uh, this economy? So from my perceptions of the economy, I mean a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, diversification is key. Mm -hmm. We talk about it time and time and again as a country, but Almost it seems <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it seems like whenever it's good times, the conversation is lost. Mm -hmm. When times become rough, the conversation comes mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. I think we need to get it done yeah. and just really diversify from copper mining yeah. and copper mining related activities. Yeah. I mean, we've got a great agri sector. Mm -hmm. I've, I believe Zambia has got the largest bodies of fresh water mm -hmm. in uh, the African continent. We've got very arable land, really, really good arable land. So if we can diversify into some of those things, mm -hmm. you know, even in the mining space itself, we diversify into not just copper, mm -hmm. but also, you know, really invest into things like the gemstones and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Things that will be able to allow us to export as yeah. a country, to increase our export earnings. That becomes a key thing for me. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that, uh, you know, uh, these business cycles yeah. or economic cycles. The boom and bust cycles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they don't last uh, forever. So it's not going to be a bad run forever. I think mm -hmm. good times are going to come. Yeah. And we need to prepare for those and take advantage of the good times as and when they come. So right now, yes, we've got a couple of headwinds, but it's not all doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. We spoke about another big thing, which is the debt restructuring. Yeah. Here, it came up quite a lot. And the truth of the matter is that as long as we have uh, the debt restructuring done, mm. what we expect to see is uh, foreign direct investment start flowing in. Yeah. We see, you know, real money investors coming in to our securities markets, and that should see a significant strengthening of the quarter. And again, when those things happen, we need to take advantage of the situation and bring in that diversification so that we can have sustainability in some of our indicators like the exchange rate. Hello everybody and welcome to the Financial Insight Show. It's a special day today. It's been a very special morning organized by ABSA Bank. As you can see, we are at uh, Hotel Intercontinental. You can probably see behind me here. And we've had a very special morning. Uh, it's been a discussion forum around Zambia economic outlook. My name is Clarence Chongo and I'm standing here with the CEO and founder of Financial Insight, Mwelwa Chivesakunda. Mr. Chivesakunda, welcome to the Financial Insight Show. Clarence, thank you so, so much uh, you know, for having me. Uh, it's been a very exhilarating morning, and as you, you know, rightly dis, you know, described, we had a, uh, you know, Financial Insight was moderating a panel discussion. Uh, I myself uh, was uh, you know, the lead moderator of a very finely selected uh, panel discussion, wouldn't you agree? A stellar cast, yeah, it was, ab yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they had the likes of you know, APSA Group's uh, uh, Rido Marcus, yeah. uh, who is a senior economist uh, at APSA based in Johannesburg. Uh, they also had Stanley Tamele, who's head of the Zambi unit, uh, uh, Global Markets mm -hmm. uh, unit. But then, interesting enough, they also brought in uh, you know, Stan, you know, Andrew, Andrew uh, Chibuye, who's uh, head of... Uh, uh, PwC, but also, you know, he has uh, been um, publishing a lot of, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, documents around the economic space. Indeed. Uh, economic uh, analysis uh, type of articles. Absolutely. Uh, articles. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. So how did you find the panel discussion yourself? Uh, okay, so for me, uh, it was interesting to see that although the country is facing some major headwinds, you know, and, and I think the elephant in the room that kept being mentioned was this debt restructuring, debt restructuring and the bottleneck yeah. around there. Absolutely. And that once that gets freed up, we should see the economy really start to ease into growth and a strong, strong performance. I think that one was key for me. Also mention of the effect of the drought. Exactly. Especially With the state of emergency just announced a couple absolutely. of weeks ago. Absolutely. And it was interesting to get insights on that yeah. as well. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, the drought and the debt restructuring and we, we should hopefully see these things easing and then Zambia will begin to perform. I don't know about you, how, how you know, did you, you find You know, moderating, and, you know, when, when you've got a selection uh, like uh, the one I've just uh, mentioned, uh, you know, you're obviously getting, you know, insights from a global perspective. Yeah. I mean, uh, Rido was able to give us uh, insights in terms of what the debt situation is. And as you'll see in the footage that, 
you know, we have, uh, you know, even in this episode, mm -hmm. as well as on our, on our platforms. Uh, but then, you know, Andrew kind of uh, brought it a bit closer to home because he's always very good at, uh, you know, deciphering things for the ordinary guy on the streets yeah. of Zambia to actually fully understand in terms of where we're at. It obviously, you know, like you've rightly put, obviously the, the elephant in the room still remains, you know, your, your debt. But then there's a lot of, you know, exogenous and internal, you know, forces yeah. that are at play. Um, a side conversation over coffee. I mean, you and I sat through, you know, mm -hmm. with, uh, with, uh, with Rido and, you know, he, he was giving us a descriptor of like, when it come, came to comparables, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you know, initially, I think we had the Ghana Zambia sort of, uh, you know, comparison. Yeah. But then, you know, obviously Ghana's gone through a particular, you know, a particular transition with its own debt restructure. But lo and behold, now we're seeing comparables even with Kenya, which was something very interesting that, uh, you know, that, uh, that I learned from today. Uh, but I mean, overall, uh, like you said, I mean, look, it, it, it's... There's a lot of, uh, you know, different uh, parameters, if I can call them that, that are at play at this particular moment in time. Very critical though, you know, we mm -hmm. are friends with the Central Bank. They have the Monetary Policy Committee meeting in, in, in May. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, know, you know, there was obviously indications that, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be some, you know, significant uh, announcements if, you know, the current, uh, you know, current um, performance, for example, of the Kwacha mm -hmm. and inflation as well continue yeah. on the current uh, trend that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think overall it was a very interesting one. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I just hope that uh, our viewers enjoyed the footage uh, that we compiled, uh, mm. you will be seeing uh, a lot more of such, uh, you know, such, such, in, you know, insights on our platform. Speaking of our platforms, is there any major announcement we need to make regarding the website? I know that uh, you're responsible for a secret team, if I can call it that. Um, well, I don't know about secret team. All I can say is I'm project managing uh, a website development. It's being championed by our very good friends, ProBase. Probates have come on board to support Financial Insight to put together an all singing and all dancing website that I can't really even wait to see uh, come to fruition. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, we'll just encourage all our followers to continue following the Financial Insight story. And uh, feedback is always very important. The team is always available online to answer all your questions. So Indeed. as we say at Financial Insight, get, get to, to know. know.